We've used strings in lots of the projects so far, and I've tried to introduce you to a handful of important properties and methods as we go. Here though, I'm going to run through some of those, plus a few more, while also looking at how we can write extensions to make strings a little more useful. First, there are methods for checking whether a string starts with or ends with a substring, has prefix, and has suffix. They look like this. Let password equals as a string one, two, three, four, five. Then password dot has prefix one, two, three, and password dot has suffix four, five, six. We can add extension methods to string to extend the way prefixing and suffixing works. We could say extension on string func deleting the prefix prefix string return a string we can say guard self dot has prefix prefix else return self so if we don't have the prefix go ahead and return ourselves as we are but if we do have the prefix we'll drop the prefix from the string and return that back we can say return the string form of self dot drop first prefix dot count like that we can do the same thing for suffixes by saying func deleting suffix again suffix string return string guard self dot has suffix that suffix else return self and then return string self dot drop last suffix dot count so same thing but now it's drop last rather than drop first now these two methods are new drop first and drop last but they remove a certain number of letters from either the end or the start of a string as a result they return a substring part of a string not a whole string it's a separate type in swift for performance reasons but this thing says it's going to return our actual string which is why we convert that substring into a real string I put it into initialize the strings here. Now we've used lowercase and uppercase in previous projects. But there's also the capitalize property that gives the first letter of each word a capital letter. For example, we could say let weather equals it's going to rain. Then print weather dot capitalized. And that's going to print out it's going to rain with a capital I, G, T, and R. There we go. We could add our own specialized capitalization that uppercase is only the first letter in our string by writing another string extension. We could say extension string var capitalized first returns a string guard let first letter equals self dot first else return an empty string. So if the string has no first letter, just bail out immediately with an empty string because the string's empty. Otherwise, we will return first letter dot uppercase plus self dot drop first like that make the first letter uppercase then append the rest as they were now one thing you can't see in that code is an interesting subtlety of working with strings individual letters of strings aren't strings but are instead instances of character if i use co-completion here to look at first letter you'll see it is a string dot element which is a special type alias for a character. This is a dedicated type for holding single letters of strings. Now, complexity here is when we call uppercase on that, that's actually a method on character rather than string. However, where things get really interesting is if you look at the way uppercase works, again with co-completion, dot uppercase, you'll see this thing returns a string. So uppercasing a character returns a string. The reason for this is simple. Language is hard. And although many languages have one-to-one -one mappings between lowercase and uppercase characters, some do not. For example, a lowercase a maps to an uppercase a, lowercase b maps to uppercase b in English, and so on. But in German, a lowercase sz character, like a capital B almost, becomes a double s when uppercased. Now, SS is clearly two separate letters, so uppercase has no choice but to return a string. One last useful method of strings is contains, which returns true if a string contains another string. So we could say this. 
let input equals Swift is like Objective C without the C. Oops, without the C. And then input dot contains Swift. I press play, and it should come back with true. Boom, true over here. Because we can see that Swift is indeed inside the parent string up here. So contains takes a string parameter and returns true or false depending on whether that parameter exists in the string. Keep that in your head for a moment. Now look at this code. Let languages equals Python, Ruby, and Swift. Okay, then use languages.contains Swift. And now we're saying, does that string exist anywhere in the array? We can see it's right there. So again, running this code should return true. Boom. So it's true for the string and true for the array. Now for the part that confuses people. Brace yourself. We have here an array of strings, Python, Ruby, and Swift. And we have an input string. Swift is like a bit of C without the C. How can we check whether any string in our array exists in our input string? Does Python or Ruby or Swift exist somewhere in this string? Well, we might start writing an extension on string like this. Extension string func contains any of some sort of array, array of string, returns bool. And then say for item in array, if self contains that item, then return true. But if we've gone through all the items in the array and we get to this point, line 17, without finding a match, we will return false. This string had none of the items in the array. We can now run our check like this. We could say uh, input dot contains any of languages. Do any of these words appear in that string? That certainly works. If I press play now, it'll say true, because Swift appears in there. But it's not elegant, and Swift has a better solution built right in. You see, arrays have a second contains method called contains where. This lets us provide a closure that accepts an element from the array as its only parameter and returns true or false depending on whatever condition we decide we want. This closure gets run on all the items in the array until one returns true, at which point it stops. So now let's put together the pieces. First, when used with an array of strings, contains where wants to call a closure that accepts a string and returns true or false. Second, the contains method of strings accepts a string as its parameter here and returns true or false. And third, Swift massively blurs the lines between functions, methods, closures, and more. So what we can actually do is pass one function directly into the other. We can write code like this. Languages dot contains where input dot contains. And if we run that code, we'll also get back true. It's doing the same work as our extension. Now, don't feel bad if you have to read that single line of code several times. It's not easy. So let's break it down. Contains where the method on arrays will call its closure once for every element in the language's array until it finds one that returns true, at which point it stops. For our closure, we're passing input.contains as a closure that contains where should run. This means Swift will call input.contains Python and get back false. Then it will call input.contains Ruby and get back false again. And finally, it will call input.contains Swift and get back true, then stop there. So, because the contains method of string has the exact same signature that contains where expects, i.e. it takes a string and returns a boolean, this works perfectly. Do you see what I mean about how Swift blurs the lines between these things?